Welcome to a lesson on image and inverse image. When discussing functions, we have notation for talking about an element of the domain, say x, and its corresponding element in the codomain. We write f of x, which is the image of x. Sometimes we want to talk about all of the elements that are images of some subset of the domain. It would also be nice to start with some element of the codomain, say y, and talk about which element or elements, if any, from the domain it is the image of. We could write those x in the domain such that f of x equals y, but this is a lot of writing and therefore we use special notation. To address the first situation, what we are after is a way to describe the set of images of elements in some subset of the domain. Suppose f maps x to y, meaning x is the domain and y is the codomain, where big A is a subset of big X, meaning big A, is a subset of the domain, possibly all of it. We will use a notation f of big A to denote the image of A under f, namely the set of elements in Y that are the image of elements from the set A. That is, f of big A is equal to the set containing f of little a, which are elements of big Y, where again big Y is the codomain, such that little a is an element of big A where big A, again, is a subset of the domain. Let's look at an example. Below we have the domain and the codomain for the function given using two-line notation. On the right, we have the image of the set with elements one, two, and three, which is equal to the set containing the elements that are the images of one, two, and three from the domain, which is equal to the set with elements 11 and 15. Again, the set with elements 11 and 15 is the set of the images of the subset of the domain, which is the set with elements one, two, and three. Next, we have the image of the set with elements one and two equals the set with the element of 11. This indicates that 11 is the image of the elements of one and two from the domain, where the set with elements one and two is a subset of the domain. And then finally, we have the image of the set with the element of five equals the set with the element of 17. Again, this is equal to the set with the element of 17 because 17 is the image of the element of five from the domain. We could do this in the other direction as well. We might ask which elements of the domain get mapped to a particular set in the codomain. So again, if F maps X to Y and we let big B be a subset of big Y, meaning big B is a subset of the codomain, then we'll use a notation shown here for the inverse image of B under F, namely the set of elements in X, the domain, whose image are elements in B. In other words, the inverse image of B under F is equal to the set of X, where X is an element of the domain, such that F of little x is an element of B, where B is a subset of the codomain. Often we are interested in elements whose image is a particular element y in the codomain. The notation above works where this is the set of all elements in the domain that f sends to y. It makes sense to think of this as a set. There might not be anything sent to y if y is not in the range, in which case the inverse image of the set containing y under f is equal to the empty set or f might send multiple elements to y if f is not injective. As a notational convenience, the curly brackets around the y can be dropped and we can use this notation instead, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep using the curly brackets for set notation. And now let's look at the same function again and look at some inverse images. So again, we have the same function, same domain, same codomain, but now on the right we have the inverse image of the set with elements 11 and 15 is equal to the set containing all the elements from the domain in which 11 and 15 are the images. And notice how this is a set containing the elements of one, two, three, and four. Below, we have the inverse image of the set with the element of 17, which is equal to the set with the elements from the domain where 17 is the image. And notice in this case, it's only the element of five from the domain, which gives us a set with the element of five. Let's look at one more example. We have a function f that maps a set with elements one, two, three, four, five, six to the set with elements a, b, c, and d given by the function shown below in two-line notation. So first we're asked to find 
the image of the set with elements one, two, and three under F. This is equal to the set containing the elements that are images of the elements of one, two, and three from the domain. So in looking at the function in two-line notation, notice one maps to A, two maps to A, and three maps to B, and therefore the image of the set with elements one, two, and three under F is equal to the set with elements A and B. Again, this is because A and B are the elements in the codomain to which F sends one, two, and three. Next, we have the inverse image of the set with elements A and B under F. This is equal to the set of elements from the domain in which A and B are the images. And notice the elements of one, two, three, four, and five from the domain do have images of A or B, and therefore the inverse image of the set with the elements A and B under F is equal to the set with the elements of one, two, three, four, and five. And then finally we have, and finally we have the inverse image of the set with the element of D under F, which is equal to the set with the elements from the domain where D is the image. And notice in this case, D does not appear in the range, and therefore no elements from the domain have an image of D, and therefore the inverse image of the set containing D under F is equal to the empty set. Again, D is not in the range of F. I hope you found this helpful.